So hi everyone and welcome to our video on the start of our discussions on the consumer optimum in our uh, overall module on financial decision making under certainty. So if you recall in the last video, we tackled a specific example which sought to derive the capital market trading line. And uh, we said that the capital market trading line exists uh, when lending and borrowing are allowed. Now, uh, a question has to be asked in that if lending and borrowing are allowed, what is the optimal um, consumption streams to use? And in reality, the optimal consumption stream will vary from person to person depending on their preferences. So we're now sort of going to merge what we learn from how to represent consumer preferences and the concept of the capital market trading line in terms of deriving what we refer to as the consumer optimum. Okay, so that's our goal for this particular video. We're going to discuss the consumer optimum. So we're going to assume uh, in uh, for this is at case A. So at case A, remember, it's our case where in the borrowing rate is the same as the lending rate is the same as uh, basically they're just one rate. So there's no difference between the borrowing and the lending rate. And uh, at case A, the individual makes only one consumption or saving decision for the entire lifetime at time zero. What does that mean? Well, because the consumer under the Fisher model only lives for two periods, today and tomorrow, the decision is made today. So uh, there will always be a decision made today and then there, it's pointless to save in the next period. And after that, uh, in this particular case, uh, the capital market exists in which the individual can borrow or lend at some uh, real interest rate uh, R. So they can sort of borrow and they can lend at that same interest rate. Another one is that, uh, again, the objective of the consumer is to be able to choose. Okay, so the person wants to choose a present consumption stream. Sorry, that's uh, the present one, which is C0. And it wants to choose a future consumption stream, which is C1. And we said that, you know, the consumer can opt to borrow, he or she can opt to lend, or he or she could opt to not borrow or lend. So those are three potential outcomes that could be there. So the consumer's objective is essentially, it wants to choose uh, C0 and C1. So choose a consumption stream C0 and C1 that maximizes utility given a wealth constraint or an endowment constraint. And this consumer uh, this, op this consumer optimum must satisfy the following conditions. First, um, it, uh, the optimum must lie on uh, the intertemporal budget constraint. So it has, to, it has to lie along the capital market trading line. So it has to be some point there, okay? Whether it's on uh, the, remember, the, uh, the capital market trading line bisects or intersects with the endowment point, whether it's at that endowment point or whether it's somewhere in the borrowing or somewhere in the lending part of the line. So it could be this case that, uh, so we have, remember our original equation, which is something here, I'm sorry, this one. Okay, and uh, because the rates are the same, this is true for both borrowing and uh, lending. Okay, and remember we put into context the intercepts, the Y and the X intercepts, which are W naught and W1. So that's the first condition. The second one is that uh, for a consumer optimum, the slope of the indifference curve must be tangent, okay, must be tangent uh, or must be equal, okay, in this case, of course, equal to the slope of the capital market trading line. So in terms of like a visualization, so if you recall, okay, uh, so this is C1, this is C0, when we have a case wherein we have identical rates, the capital market trading line is just uh, a straight line there. And we have, say, an endowment point here, E. So we have a couple of potential solutions. The indifference curve might be tangent to this upper portion, which is the lending portion, in which case the consumer lends. So uh, if it's here, that's lending. Okay. It could be that uh, at purple, somewhere here, say it's tangent there, uh, the optimal thing to do is to borrow, right? Depending on the preference. Then if it's say uh, intersects, uh, uh, if say it's tangent at the endowment point E, then you neither, okay, you neither 
borrow nor lend. Okay, so that's the condition that we have. So three particular cases. And again, the capital market trading line is a direct downward sloping line because uh, the, we are in a case wherein the borrowing and the lending rates are the same. So this is again, imp this implies that um, the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the capital market trading line, which means that, remember, the slope of the IC is the negative of MRS, right? Because the, uh, the indifference curve is downward sloping. If you take the negative of the slope of the indifference curve, you get MRS, which is this one. And that is equal to the marginal rate of transformation inside the capital market. And in a case wherein the borrowing and the lending rates are the same, we come up to this condition here, wherein this part is MRS, C0, C1, and this is your marginal rate of transformation in the capital market. So again, illustrating it looks something like this. So for example, um, in this case, so the endowment point that we have is this point. Okay, so why one is here, why not is here. So that means that this is point E. And you'll notice that the, uh, the tangency point occurs at this uh, point here, right? Uh, somewhere along here. So that's at this point here. And you'll notice that uh, C1, okay, so the optimal, uh, I'm sorry, C, uh, uh, C let's, let's put it from the perspective of uh, C0. C0 is lower than Y0. So C0, uh, C0 is lower than Y0, right? And this means that since C0 is lower than Y0, the present consumption is lower than the present endowment, which means that there is an excess. Okay? Uh, the consumer didn't spend all of his or her endowment. Therefore, what will the consumer do with that excess endowment? The consumer will just opt to lend it out. right? So the above consumer saves this distance. Um, it saves this amount, which is S0, which is Y0 minus C0 star and lends it at an interest rate R. Notice that since the point is to the left of the uh, endowment point, we are part of the lending part. So this is the lending part of the, uh, of, the in, of the intertemporal budget line or the capital market trading line. And of course, the consumer is repaid interest, uh, repaid with interest um, is C1 minus Y1. So the consumer will gain this amount in the next period. Right in the next period. So this is interest accrued. So interest or interest earned. Okay, so this is interest earned in the next period because the person lent out in the first period. Hence the future consumption is essentially Y1, which is this value, plus uh, the difference between this one, which is your interest. So whatever the person was endowed with in the future added to the interest earned is essentially the amount that they consume in the second period or in the future. So the nature of the solution in case A is that when, when regards to borrowers versus lenders, individuals, again, uh, we said that there were three potential solutions, right, uh, in the last slide. Well, an individual with strong preferences towards future consumption will often be lenders. And this is, in fact, the case for majority of the population. Generally, people with savings would opt to just lend or to save it in a bank because they would know that they would need to service future consumption. Versus there are also people, although not quite as many as the, in the first case, that uh, individuals would have strong preferences towards current consumption and, there will there, and they will therefore be borrowers. And again, the goal, is, the, the goal of the consumer is to choose a level of C0 and C1 that maximize utility subject to a given wealth constraint, right? So this is how we write it formally in terms of our optimization notation. Again, the goal of the consumer is to be able to maximize utility. So this is the maximization procedure. And we have here uh, a representation for our capital market trading line or the intertemporal budget constraint. So this is capital market trading line. And all this says is that uh, this is our current uh, value of, of future consumption, right? And is equal to the current or the present value of the future wealth. Okay, so that's just all that's implied. And equivalently, uh, since it's economics, we typically use the Lagrangian technique. So 
we want to maximize a Lagrangian, which is some function of present and future consumption, and lambda, which is equal to the utility function, which we want to maximize subject to our constraint, which is the intertemporal budget constraint. And we can get the following first order conditions. So if we derive it, we get those conditions. Then what we can do is we can isolate that out. So conditions one and two. Okay, so they, they, uh, if I sort of manipulate these two conditions, they will imply essentially the condition we discussed earlier, which is that the marginal rate of substitution should be equal to the marginal rate of transformation. And that is indeed what we have here as a condition. Then condition three is just expressed as a budget constraint. Then we solve for the optimal and we can get that. So I think to understand it better, let, let's start with a good example. Okay, so uh, consider this uh, problem. Okay, a consumer earns labor income of 80,000 at the beginning of the first period and none at the second period. Okay, so we stop here. Uh, if this means that why not, or the initial endowment is uh, 80,000, right? And the future endowment is essentially zero, right? Earns none or is not endowed in anything in the second period. The real interest rate of borrowing and lending is 10%. That means that RS is equal to RV is equal to 0.10. Okay, so we have 10%. Then the utility function is this one. So we have a utility function here. It's a, uh, a sort of like a, uh, in a Cobb-Douglas form. That's C0, 0 0.75, C1, 0 0.5. Okay, then what we want to do is we want to solve for the values of the utility maximizing first period and second period consumption levels using our results in, uh, well, we solved it before uh, in part three. And we want to show that the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the marginal rate of transformation at the optimal bundle. So let's start with that. Okay, so uh let, let's begin right okay so let me just switch it up so the uh in order for us to solve okay our goal is to solve okay solve so that's to solve um the optimal c naught star and the c1 star the optimal consumption streams and to do that uh the optimum lifetime consumption stream without capital markets uh, satisfies the following first order conditions. As we said, so the first one is that C0 plus C1 over 1 plus R is equal to Y0 plus Y1 over 1 plus R. And the second condition states that MRS C0 C1 is equal to the marginal rate of transformation in the capital market, okay? So remember MRS, that's just the partial of the utility function with respect to C0 over the partial of the utility function with respect to C1. And again, MRT is just, uh, if, if it's marginal rate of transformation, that's the negative of the slope of the intertemporal budget constraint, which will be one plus R. Okay, so we're gonna have that condition there. Okay, so let's substitute what we know, okay? so. This portion here we know is W naught, and we actually know sort of what W naught is, okay? Because we were given with Y the endowments and the interest rate. So if you recall, W naught is equal to Y naught. Y naught is in the, is the endowment in the first period that's eighty thousand plus Y one that's zero over one plus point ten, meaning W naught is eighty thousand. Right, so W naught is 80,000, okay, and uh, we have this condition there, so, uh, so we'll take note of that. We can also solve for a value of MRT, right? MRT is just 1 plus R, meaning that this is just 1 plus 0.10, which is equal to 1.10, and we now have MRT, okay, so... That's what, we, that, that, that's what we can solve given uh, from our given. So let's start first with condition two. So uh, starting with condition two. So starting with uh, condition two. So to do that, we need to get MRS, right? So MRS, C0, C1, right? And this is just equal to 
um, if you recall, our utility function, so let's just recall, our utility function is C0. Okay, so this is C0, 0 0.75, C1, 0 0.5. So this is again equal to the partial derivative of u with respect to C0 over the partial derivative of u with respect to C1. Okay, then if we solve for the, uh, the marginal uh, utility from present consumption, we'll come up with 0 0.75 C1 raised to 0 0.5 over C0 raised to 0 0.25 all over if you solve for the marginal utility of, uh, uh, with respect to uh, the marginal utility of future consumption, that's this form here in the denominator, you're left with 0 0.50, uh, C0, uh, 0 0.75, then C1 raised to uh, 0 0.5. You have that there. Therefore, if you sort of simplify this, we can just simplify this as, uh, uh, so we can sort of combine things so that 0 0.75, C1, 0 0.5 over C0, 0 0.25, times, uh, so we get the reciprocal, right? So that's um, C1, 0 0.5 over C0, 0 0.75 times uh, 1 over 0 0.5, right? And this would all be equal to 1.5 C1. Notice because you add the two exponents, same with this, over C0. And effectively, this is here, our MRS, C not C1. So we have our MRS there. And again, by the second FOC, we know that the MRS C not C1 should be equal to the MRT, which is 1 plus R, right? So we have 1.5 C1 over C not, right, is going to be equal to um, 1.10, okay? Then, so this is the second one that we have. The first FOC that we have again is uh, for the first FOC, that's this one. Okay, so C naught, okay, so C naught plus C1 over 1 plus R. Well, 1 plus R is just 1.10, right? 1.10, that's going to be equal to 80,000, right? So we have that there. Okay, now uh, how do you sort of solve this out? Well, you can isolate you isolate out uh, isolate out uh, C. Uh, actually, you can start from here. Uh, you can start from either one or two. So uh, I usually start with this one. So we can isolate out a value for C one here. So for example, uh, we get one point five C one equal to one point one zero C naught. Then I divide both sides by one point five one point five. I get an intermediate value of C one which is 1.10 C0 over 1.5. Then I solve for C0 star in this equation, which is going to be equal to 80,000, okay, minus, because I transpose that to the other side, a value for C0, uh, which is 1.10 C0 over 1.5. Then I solve for the optimal C0, and I'm going to find that if you solve these two equations for the two unknowns, you're going to come up with the solution that C0 star is equal to 48,000 and C1 star is equal to 35,200. Okay, so you're going to solve for that when you solve for these two equations. Now, note that, uh, so note, okay, the optimal saving, okay, the optimal saving saving that we have is essentially uh, the difference between uh, the present endowment less the, uh, the present consumption, right? So that's C not star. And notice that we do have a saving because our Y not is 80,000, but our C not is just 48,000, meaning that the consumer opted to lend out the remainder, which is 32,000, and uh, we have that one there, right? So 32,000 was the amount, the amount consumer lent, right? So this is the amount that the consumer lent. And we can also sort of determine 
from here, just based on this amount of thirty-two thousand, uh, just a sort of a, a sort of like check. How do you calculate for C1 star? Well, since there's no point in the consumer saving another time in the second period because there are only two periods, the person will consume everything in the second period. So that's equal to S star times 1 plus R. So if you do that, that's 32,000 times 1.1, which is indeed 35,200, which is the same that you should get if you solve for these two equations there. Okay, so... We have that one there. And again, just to check, so you could check uh, if it satisfies the FOC. So MRS is equal to 1.5 C0, uh, sorry, is that C0 or C? Uh, it's going to be uh, C1 rather over C0 equal 1.1. If you substitute the values that you found out, which are uh, for C1, that's 35,200 divided by 48,000 that should equal 1.1. And if you solve it, you'll notice that 1.1 is indeed equal to 1.1. So that's a simple example of our case A under the consumer optimum and our, the beginning of our discussion on the consumer optimum. In the next video, we're gonna discuss uh, another case, which is the case wherein we have um, another solution, which is uh, lending but no borrowing, and also case C, which is the borrowing and the lending at different rates. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.